Howdy, howdy, folks. Once again, this is Donnie coming at you with another tutorial in the Storage for Linux series. In the first two videos in the series, we looked at how to use FDisk to create the old style MBR partitions on a Linux machine. And in the second tutorial, we looked at how to use GDisk on how to create the new style, newfangled GPT partitions on a Linux machine. But now that we have the partitions, we need to do something with them, but we can't use them just yet. We need to format them somehow. And the first thing we're going to look at is how to format a partition to use it as a swap partition. But before we look at that, let's look at some differences between using swap space on Windows and swap space on Linux. With Windows, swap space is required. If you have a Windows machine without swap space, that machine will not boot. Windows uses a swap file rather than a swap partition. That swap file is dynamically sized. It can grow and shrink as the need arises. With Linux, we have a swap partition rather than a swap file, although that may be changing. There's one Linux distro, a new version of it, and I cannot for the life of me remember right now whether it's the new version of OpenSUSE or the new version of Ubuntu, but uh, one of them is now going to a swap file rather than a swap partition. But traditionally, with Linux, it's always been a swap partition, and most of your Linux distros still are using the swap partition concept. With Linux, swap space is optional. If you've got gobs of RAM, on your machine and you don't need swap space, then you can set your machine up without it. With Linux, the swap partition is a fixed size. It will not grow and shrink as needed. But you can add more swap space as necessary. You can either create a swap file on the main file system, or you can add a drive and set up another swap partition either way. But in either case, physical RAM is faster. So yeah, having the swap space can get you out of a tight jam if you don't have enough physical RAM. But if you have a choice between adding physical RAM and adding more swap space, add the RAM. It's going to be faster. So the next question then is how much swap space do you need? Well, this has been kind of a controversial topic over the years. If you pick up a really, really old Linux certification book, you're going to see some different theories about that. But in essence, it just boils down to two things. How much RAM does your machine have? In general, the more RAM you have, the less swap space that you need. And how are you using your machine? Is desktop, server, are you using large database files? Do you have lots of virtual machines going? All these things will affect how much swap space that you actually need. So I can't really give you a hard and fast rule about how much swap space you need. It's going to depend upon these factors. Now, if you're setting up a Linux machine and you just accept the default partitioning scheme when you get to that point in the installer, then you're going to get probably anywhere from two gigabyte to four gigabyte of swap space set up. So on a normal desktop, you know, that might be enough to do you. But that again, depends on how you use a machine, how much physical RAM you have, you may need a little bit more than that. So having looked at all that, let's go over here and look at our virtual machine. This is the same virtual machine I used for the previous two videos for creating the partitions. And so you see here, fdisk-l on the SDB drive. We see that we have SDB1 is our swap partition that we created. And then if we do like this for SDC, we see there that we have the same thing here. We have partition number one is the swap partition. It does not matter which one of these I use for the demo because once we get the partitions created, either as an MBR partition or GPT partition, the rest of the procedures are going to be the same. There's going to be no difference. 
we can use the swap on dash s to look at our swap partitions and we see that we have this one swap partition that was created when we installed the operating system and we see that the size there we see the size there two gigabytes I know it looks like megabytes there it looks like two million but it actually is gigabytes okay uh, we're not using any of it there so we actually don't need to add more swap space on this particular machine but we're going to do it anyway just for the demo and we also see over here the priority the priority is number one doesn't really matter in this case since it's the only swap partition we have but that's okay we're going to go with it so first thing we need to do is to use mk swap in order to format our partition so mk swap dev sdb1 and i'd already done this here on this particular partition so that's why it's giving us this warning here about wiping the old swap signature but still it's okay it's still it's setting it up anyway and we can do the same thing if we wanted to with the dev sdc1 i've not done that one as yet so that's what you really should be seeing so now that we've done that with the mk swap we use swap one in order to activate our swap so we can do sdb1 like that and swap on dash s and we see there that indeed we have them both activated so what's going to happen here is this device up here that dm1 device our original swap partition it's going to get filled up first and then the sdb1 that we just created will not be used until dm1 gets completely filled and you can also see under the size there uh, again it looks like five million but in reality it is five gigabytes and we know that because i know for a fact that that's how i set it when i create that partition and if i wanted to i could go ahead and do swap on dev sdc1 like so and again the swap on dash s and now you see that i have three swap partitions and if i wanted to deactivate one there is the swap off okay so that one now is deactivated and I could do the same with the SDB one if I wanted to it's deactivated as well okay so that's all well and good right so the next question then would be how to make this permanent when you reboot the machine well that is going to be a topic for a future video because the next thing we need to do is look at how to format regular partitions and then we'll after that we'll look at how to make this permanent so that it will be activated when you boot the machine but for now that's all i got pretty simple thing here so shouldn't have any trouble with it if you like the video be sure to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one